So this brings us to good demos gone bad. Um, so has anyone ever gone to a demonstration that has turned into a riot? Um, we were at a demonstration for, for Bobby um, at the uh, 26th uh, Federal Plaza, and we were following the ambulance. Uh, things that, well, he was taken out of an ambulance and we started following him. So we started telling people if they didn't want to risk arrest to fall back. The police got very violent, not the um, uh, New York City uh, police officers, but the, the ones at Federal Plaza. They, yeah, they pushed us. They, they actually hit me with their forearm and pretty tiny. Like, I'm not very threatening anymore and doing anything um, bad. So it got pretty bad. Like, a lot of people got hurt. Um, some people were arrested. Um, and we weren't doing anything. So things can escalate pretty fast. Has anybody else? Um, I've been at Washington Square, I guess, last, I feel like uh, maybe it was a, a winter, um, in, in the time of the first Muslim ban, there was a demonstration that uh, took the street um, across uh, to the west side, did a bit of uh, circumambulation, came back, and at some point the police decided they wanted to shut it down, they started to arrest people, and so it got to be a bit... Um, get their throat of people to the ground kind of thing. It was like you said, it was a few people to send a message, it's over, get out of here. Um, and you know, it was very clear what they were doing. Um, did they arrest people in the, when people were in the street, like marching? Uh, yeah, it, literally as they were crossing the street. What I'm going to do is talk a little bit about crowd calming. So one of the problems we have in a march you know, and just picture, you know, we'll just say 5,000 people on 7th Avenue marching. Only the front can see what's happening. So if you have 5,000 people marching, maybe at most 50 people can see what's going on. And everybody else is, they're just sheep, right? So they're just, they're just following. So um, generally when things happen, they happen from the front rather than from the back. So if you're marshalling and you see uh, the look of the police change, so by this what I'll say is that we started out marching and there were foot officers in blue shirts, but now we see a row of motorcycle cops with helmets. That's a change in policing, and that's something we should not panic about, but just be aware of that that's a crowd control thing on their part um, because you can create a line of those to, um, to stop people. Um, if you see a crowd, you've seen uh, beat officers, uh, blue shirts, and now all of a sudden you see riot gear, um, or you see nightsticks come out. The, the cops on the, on the, uh, horses. Right. Okay. okay. So anytime you see that kind of presence, I think it's important to stop the march and just ask the what is going on. Um, and never march a crowd into or too close to uh, a line of officers. Um, if you have to, um, the safest thing to do with a crowd is to stop them and tell them to kneel or sit. And the reason why we tell people to kneel or sit um, is so that people can see what's going on and because it is a universal sign of nonviolence and non-confrontation. So if uh, we feel things shifting in a very bad way and there's about a 1% chance this would happen, I don't want people to panic, but it, it sometimes can't happen. The safest thing for people to do is to sit so that you can see. The other thing about people sitting and seeing is that it makes it very visible if any police on the outside try to attack someone on the inside. Um, and that visibility means it's much less likely for it to happen because no one wants to be caught doing it. If everybody is standing up and a, a police officer uh, you know, goes at someone, no one sees it. Yeah. 
and no one sees their badge. But if people are sitting, you can see their badge. Um, if police start to cover up their badges, that's a very bad sign. <laughs> I mean, the, how about the undercover? Well, uh, when you get your phone out and right, but in. that's another reason for people to sit, because um, it it from a seated position people can see what's what's going on. Um, that also allows the marshals to negotiate with the police to continue passage or to end safely. So if the police say you're not, you know, you're at 34th Street, you're not going any further. We can tell the crowd, the police have said, we're at 34th Street, we're not going any further. Um, we can negotiate for, you know, give us 10 minutes to clear the street. There may be some people who choose not to leave the street, but uh, we would like to give everybody an opportunity to leave safely. And we can go through the crowd and say, the police have told us that in 10 minutes, if you're still in the street, uh, that they're gonna start arresting people. And so you can negotiate that, but you can't negotiate that if everybody is standing and moving. You can only negotiate that from a, a seated situation. So if you are, uh, and it's counterintuitive, because um, people think, I don't want to sit and do civil disobedience, but the sitting is to project nonviolence, and it's to, let every, to give everybody a visibility, not just the people at the front. Um, now, someone mentioned horses. Um, I have not seen horses brought into a demonstration in New York for a really, really, really long time. However, um, again, counterintuitive, uh, the safest thing to do if police ever bring horses into a demonstration is also to get everybody to sit down. And there are two reasons for this. Again, visibility. Two, uh, I trust the horse more than the officer. Mm -hmm. And the horses are very careful where they put their feet because they don't want to hurt themselves. And the police officer can't reach you from on top of the horse. No, I'm, uh, you, you, but they, they really can't. So it is the safest thing to do. And then again, it gives us an opportunity to negotiate with the police to move the horses out of the crowd safely and for us to get people to disperse with the um, minimum number of arrests. Now, you cannot guarantee people's safety, uh, and you can't guarantee that people won't be arrested. The only thing that we can do is to take the steps that we know uh, minimize those possibilities. Um, and if people are going to get busted, uh, we don't want it to turn into a riot. The police know how to deal with violence, and they know how to incite violence, and they know how to create a riot. And it is our job not to let them do it. So uh, that's why if, they, if we do see them moving in with riot gear, we tell people, don't panic, don't run, sit. Um, and if you have to, you can chant with your hands up like this, this is not a riot. Um, the reason you don't want people to scatter um, is that um, who gets left behind? Yeah. Okay? Older people, disabled people, women with strollers. The marshals in the last group. Right, right. <laughs> but, but, but no, but, 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 and people get, they, they, when they start running, they lose the people they're with. Um, so it is better and it is safer for some people to get arrested uh, while we negotiate um, to prevent a riot from happening. And that is sometimes the safest thing. And again, because the police do not have the capacity to arrest everybody, um, they may arrest some people, but it is our job to get it to disperse uh, safely and calmly. Um, and then uh, deal with, with what happens. And like I said, the probability of this happening is really, 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 really small. Um, but there's always a possibility. Um, and it's something that we should plan for and have a contingency for so that 
Um, if we have to use it, it's a tool that we have available to us.